9th Congressional District, but now Josh Harder, has an opponent who wants to take his seat in 2024. That challenger is Brett Dode of Ripon, who just announced his candidacy this week and is joining me now live in an exclusive first interview. Brett, welcome to Fox 40 News at 11. Thank you for having me, Sincera. Um, in your first official campaign announcement, you say you're not the typical candidate for Congress. The incumbent in this district is also a husband, also a father. The Reverend Raphael Warnock out of Georgia is a pastor and a senator, so that's been done before. So what makes you atypical, and why would that be a benefit to voters? Well, I think, you know, to what you said, certainly some of those things are not common in Congress. Being a minister, uh, as Mr. Warnock is, is is not common in Congress. Um, however, uh, what makes me different is that I am a public servant. I've been a pastor for over 16 years. Uh, I am a person who longs to help people and see transformation come into communities for the better. And so I've been working hard over the last 16 years to just make sure that um, we're doing all that we can to help as many people as we could. You know, the the entire reason I got in to Congress and, and running for this congressional seat in the first place is that I truly wanted to help uh, a gentleman that I met about eight months ago. Uh, I met him at the gas pump when we were paying around $6 and up for gas. And people in my area were definitely feeling that economic pinch on their pockets. And this particular week, as I was going to get gas, I had uh, driven three distances uh, each day. Uh, and each day I had to go to the gas pump when I was done with all my traveling to get more gas. And it was really hurting my pockets. And I had met a gentleman who had pulled up to get gas as well. And he had shared with me uh, that he drives six days a week and that it was crushing his family, that he was working mm -hmm. hard, driving all the way past Livermore every day from the Ripon area. And he looked at me in the eyes and he said, you know what? Uh, what makes this situation worse is that the people who we elected to help us are hurting us, and I wish better people ran for office. Okay. And so I, I couldn't stop thinking about this man for the next three days, shared it with my wife, and genuinely felt that we needed to start pursuing what it would mean to help this gentleman. And the fastest way that we found possible uh, would be to be able to get into the House of Representatives. All righty, let me ask you about some of what you have put into your original campaign announcement you shared that you shared with the public. You said that you would withhold funding for colleges that block what you say would be a, quote, balance in political dialogue. And they're instead focusing on, quote, educating students with only left wing ideology. Your opponent says pulling away funding from students would only serve to hurt them in the entire system. And with you being a pastor, some voters would raise an eyebrow concerned about you abandoning the separation of church and state when evaluating what's being taught. What would be your response to them? Yeah, so I think, you know, higher education is a place where there's supposed to be equal thought and content for people to debate and make choices. It's not supposed to be a place where ideology is force fed down a student's throat. And if it's a, a public institution that's receiving federal funds, I think it's important that there is an unbiased view of politics and policies in that academic arena. We're not seeing that today. We're seeing quite the opposite. Um, my kids go to public school here in California, and I've read through some of the books and have viewed some of the materials that they're having passed down uh, from the state. And it's things that deeply are lent towards a progressive left ideology. I don't think it's good. And you know, to say that uh, to withhold funds is going to hurt students, I think when they exit um, higher education with an ideology uh, that, you know, has this world very narrowly defined, I think that hurts students too. And so I think we'd have to really define what does it mean to help and what does it mean to hurt, especially okay. in an ideological way. Alrighty. The debt ceiling is the ticking time bomb that Congress is trying to defuse right now. The president has his solution. McCarthy has his cutting spending by 14 percent over a decade. But still, even in that proposal, not saying exactly how planned spending cuts would affect operations like air traffic control and what have you. Is your plan the same as the speaker's or what is your plan for addressing a situation like this? You know, I don't think we've gotten that far in the sense of nailing down and defining exactly what our plans and specific policies are going to be. It's very early still. We're still uh, trying to identify, you know, who we are out into the public eye to help them understand that we are a difference maker in this congressional um, district. And we could be. And so I don't have uh, a whole lot of details to provide at this time, uh, but I hope to have more details on that in the future. We'd love to come back and speak more about that when I do. All righty. Thank you so much.
Brett Dode challenging Josh Harder in the 9th Congressional District. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you for having me.